Okay. Geht's los? Michael, good Hi. to see you at Tech Textile. Yeah, good to see you. Actually, we are here at Tech Textile 2022 in Frankfurt, and it's a great pleasure to talk to you all, to this audience. Um, we have today a, a very nice uh, um, topic to talk about um, an issue that is in the industry. This is uh, everybody is talking about it. Uh, we had yesterday a lot of custo uh, customers here. We were talking about this issue. Um, this is uh, energy saving. We have the situation, uh, politics, uh, energy shortages, right. and a uh, critical situation for many customers of us. And uh, many people are afraid. How will this go on? Uh, then there is an, are the other topics of, uh, of sustainability, of circular economy. And everybody is, let's say, is, is asking himself, uh, uh, how will this be? How will this go on? What can we expect? Yeah. Um, I'm here with Axel Pieper, the CTO of Brückner, and it's a pleasure uh, we have him. We will, he will give uh, a lecture on the latest, let's say, concepts that we have at Brückner um, with regard to those challenges, to this, this situation. And uh, Axel, I'm looking forward to, to have those insights, yes. to see what you have prepared. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, let's, let's have go. A look. Over. Let, let's go. Yep. Let's, let's, let's see it. So. Um, So Here we are. Yeah. So the big issue is, how can we get CO2 neutral? Huh? That's that's that's, that's the, the biggest big issue. Yes. biggest challenge yes. for our industry. That's what everybody is talking about. Mm -hmm. We have this political situation, energy shortages, but the Green Deal, and the question is, what can we do in uh, textile finishing? Actually, and this is what we want to uh, show you right now. What we want want to look at. So what we can see here, Axel, this is this looks well, like a this is just tree. to illustrate. Getting yep. CO2 neutral is is a big challenge. It's a bunch of different tasks which we have to fulfill. We cannot get uh, wake up in the morning and be uh, CO2 neutral. Um, there's several measures we can take, and of course, as it is with apple picking, they are the low hanging fruit, and they are the high hanging fruit, and the very high hanging fruit, and. Um, so we must go a step-by-step -step approach. I think that's that's the way to go. Yep. And um, the best thing is to start at the, at the very bottom and to, to pick the low-hanging fruits. So that seems to be a, a a good approach. But but let's go let's go somehow structured. Let's see uh, how we at Brückner understand it. Let's say what are the measures or what are the main columns, so to say, how a customer can approach this. Yes, Axel, please. Okay, basically I see three different steps or three different challenges. And the way we can meet them is first of all, 25% of the, the way to go is to, to look at uh, innovative machine technology and to implement energy saving systems on the technical part. Yeah? Uh, the other quarter is basically the process. How do we run our processes? How optimized is our process? And then the very high hanging fruit, the most difficult part, is uh, to run the process in a CO2 neutral way. So we can see it here. This is, uh, I think, is quite, it's quite uh, good understandable. Yeah. So one part is actually the machine technology. The other one is the process. And the next one is, of, is what is the biggest chunk of it is the, the CO CO2 neutral power. The power. Innovative machine technology, this will be the smallest part we will be talking about. It's basically the technologies which we know already. It's using heat recoveries. It is using um, high efficiency motors. It's using minimal application technologies to, to, to uh, avoid uh, drying as much as possible. Uh, so that's, that's the one part, mm -hmm. Michael. And uh, mm -hmm. of course, the other part is uh, the process part. It's the process, right? yeah. So the process Understand. part, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the process part has much to do on how do I operate the, the machine. Mm -hmm. It's like car driving. You can, drive, uh, you can buy a, a great car, but it doesn't mean that you're a great driver if you first have to learn <laughs> how to drive. Yeah. Therefore, process optimization is also an important part of mm -hmm. becoming CO2 neutral. Mm -hmm. So we have control systems uh, which we can make use of. Uh, we have energy management. We can try to optimize our batch sequences in order to uh, have as little idle time as possible. Another very important thing which we have developed is uh, uh, industry 4.0 products. 
how can we assist the user to run the process in the most optimal way. We have a very smart process simulation tool based on AI, AI, yep. uh, artificial intelligence technology to help the user to make to take the most out of the machine. Yeah? So that's that's the process side. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think this is very interesting because we have also this shortage of, of skilled workers. Yes. So this sounds very very interesting, and with the help of AI and, and Industry 4.0, I think uh, this is a really a, a big big step and a great innovation. Let's talk about this big chunk, this, this yeah. CO2 power. I guess power. that's what most most of the audience is mainly concerned about. How can we get away from fossil fuels, meaning uh, natural gas, oil, uh, coal? and so forth. That's, that's the thing. And when we look at energy, energy transition, we'll be mainly talking about powering all our technology in an electrical manner. So electrical powering, also process heat in the future, I believe, will be powered by electricity. If electricity is scarce, if it's not available, then we need to convert electricity into some other form of power, and this would be hydrogen. Mm -hmm. it's everybody's talking about hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen can be further transformed into e-gases, e-fuels. Um, so that's one big chunk. Another option, of course, is, is, is biomass. Uh, uh, that's also an important part for energy transition. So mm -hmm. those, are, those are basically um, yeah, the measures on, on the power side. Understand. This is, uh, I think this is quite, quite interesting. Uh, let's look now, Axel, uh, at details. Yes. Yeah? What, we what we find here is, it's an, it's a, first it's, let's say, it's a production situation with a, with a center frame in, in finishing, a finishing line. And what, what I wanted to show is, if you look at this, it shows the demand in energy. Yeah? So one part is, of course, is the electrical energy demand uh, when we run such a stenter to run the stenter of course. And this is already quite high for driving the of fans and rollers and other machine components. So this goes up to, let's say, between, uh, we would say 100 and 150 kilowatts, what is already uh, an amount. But looking at the, the process energy that we need, the, the thermal energy that we need, uh, we have even a much higher effect, uh, um, amount. And this is maybe a factor 10. So it's to 1,500 kilowatts. Axel, this is quite a lot if we look, let's say if, uh, if a company runs up to 5,000 uh, hours, I think we have here 4,800 hours, this goes up to 5.3 gigawatts. Yeah. So what is, what is huge, what it's is huge, what is enormous. It's an enormous amount of energy. Yeah. So, so what, what do we have, what, how do we face this? What is our approach to this? Well. I made a rough estimate. If, if we would want to power this process in an electrical way, uh, we would basically need a solar field of 40,000 square meters. Huh. This, is this is assuming that we are using direct electrical heating, yeah? radiators with direct uh, electric electrical heating. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be one wind turbine onshore. Offshore wind turbines are more efficient. It would be like a quarter wind turbine offshore. Mm -hmm. So this is just to show you what kind, what big of a challenge we have ahead of us. It is, yeah. Yep. But of course we can reduce this, this energy, uh, electrical energy demand if we, if we work with, uh, for instance, heat pumps. Yeah? Heat pumps are known from, from households for the yep. heating in Europe. So with this we can already reduce uh, the energy, electrical energy uh, demand by 50%. So we would only have half a uh, onshore wind turbine or 20,000 square meters. And if we would be uh, working in, an, in a region which has more sun than we have in Germany, say somewhere in the Sahara region, we could even reduce the solar field to 8,000 8, square meters. So then, Michael, it becomes a little bit more feasible if, if we yep. look at these figures, but yep. still it's a large challenge ahead of us. It is, yeah? definitely it is. it is. Okay, this is uh, really, really, um important and important now is to see how this can be let's see this can how the are the details are how we bring this uh to to the shores how we how we make this uh, happen axel yeah. please tell the us the more concept details. is we all know it at least from from europe from germany how do we uh, uh, create how do we generate uh, renewable energies we have wind power we have solar power and we have direct powering via electricity uh, but if 
if we don't have enough space or if we don't have enough sun or enough wind, we have to go another way. Uh, maybe uh, you can advance. We have to import power from somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, could you click one? Yeah. And that's if we convert electricity into hydrogen, we have a liquid or a gas form of energy. And in Germany, people are saying we will not have enough space or probably not have enough capacity yep. to to be self-sufficient, to generate all our power ourselves. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we will have to import hydrogen. And this will also apply to many other countries. Uh, via electrolysis, we will uh, generate hydrogen. And hydrogen can be transported to the point of demand via pipelines, mm -hmm. via ships, can be stored there. Same as we today use uh, natural gas. So that's basically uh, how the system works. Mm -hmm. But let's ne next go into m the more complex way of working, maybe. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I hope this. So if we have electricity, I talk to you about how do we make it to uh, e-fuels or e-gases. Yeah? We can first create uh, hydrogen via electrolysis. That's this path. Mm -hmm. And we have an existing biomethane uh, pipeline in, in, in Germany and many parts of Europe. This is fossil uh, gas, but part of the hydrogen in the future will be fed into uh, the pipelines. So people are saying about 10% of hydrogen will, will basically go into, uh, into our existing pipelines. Yeah? But sometimes hydrogen is, is not very practical. So the, the next step is to further synthesize hydrogen and make other e-gases or e-fuels from it because it's easier to transport them to somewhere. So we are talking about synthetic ammonia. That's, that's one important carrier of, of, of energy. Uh, methanol can also be a, a carrier or we can also make synthetic methane. So this is this is basically um, these are e-fuels which which can power our processes the way we know it, but with uh, with a CO2 neutral uh, approach. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then the next part is the biomass part. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is generating uh, e-fuels from electricity, but we can also uh, generate um, power from biogas. So if we have biomass, we can create biogas. And this biogas can also be fed into uh, our existing pipelines. Yeah? Um, mm. Sometimes we have residual biomass, or we have biomass which we can convert into bio coal. And in countries like Indonesia, yep. for instance, where we have a lot of coal fired uh, energy generation, mm -hmm. we can use uh, bio coal which we create from biomass uh, to fire processes in a CO2 mm -hmm. neutral way. So this is just to give you an overview, a okay, schematic mm -hmm. yeah, of, of. Let's have a look now how we how we bring this down to to reality. Let's say in in the production line to to standard frames to to yeah finishing right. machine. Yeah, because this is now the next question. Now we have basically understood how um, the green the energy transition will take place. We have electricity, hydrogen, or other e gases, e fuels. Mm -hmm. So. What we see very often today that customers have green po uh, electrical power and they want to make use of it. Yeah? Yep. They want to make use of it in the center, in, in yes. our process. So what we can offer today already is uh, electrical radiators uh, to heat, to generate the process heat. So, mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. one uh, 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 way which we already uh, are going quite frequently. A mm -hmm. lot of customers... Yes. Uh, have have uh, decided for this system. Mm -hmm. The only drawback is the low efficiency, because direct electrical heating has a relatively low efficiency. Um, you can increase this efficiency by, Michael, please show the next. Uh, yeah, by using what we know in our household. It's the heat pump. Yeah? Uh, the heat pumps, which we know from our household, they have a so-called coefficient of performance, COP. Mm -hmm. And this COP means if we put in one piece of electrical energy, we can generate two pieces of process heat, or three pieces, four pieces, depending on the COP. Mm -hmm. And we can make the same, make use of the same concept. We can use a um, high temperature heat pump, also for, for such an energy intensive uh, dryer. 
and we can generate steam from uh, from this heat pump and we would heat the process inside the stenter with steam coming from a from a high temperature heat pump and this would bring down the electrical energy demand by half so we only need 50 percent of electricity compared to this concept. compared to that so solution yeah, that's that's so that's a very interesting technology and it's uh, coming up and uh, we are looking forward to, to, to implement the first prototypes yes. with yes. interested customers. We already have, are talking to customers and uh, this is definitely very interesting. Yes. Let's look now um, at other possibilities, eg eg gases and fuels for direct firing. Right. Um, yeah. If we don't have enough green electricity available, we have to import the energy via e-fuels, e-gases. So everybody's talking about hydrogen. As mentioned before, it can also be other types of uh, e-gases, e-fuels. Mm -hmm. uh, methanol, ammonia, can be biogas, whatever. And for, this, for these gases, we can basically use burners as, as we have them today, gas burners. But these would be special gas burners. Mm -hmm because we're not talking about natural gas, we are talking about hydrogen or we're talking about uh, ammonia or something like yep. this. But in general, we can make s use of the same burners to fire the e-fuels, e-gases mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cre create process heat okay. for the stenter. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be done in a decentral way, meaning that we have uh, burners at the machine level or we have a central boiler. Central boiler system. A boiler system. Yep. And this central boiler has one big hydrogen gas burner, for instance, and we create uh, thermo oil. And the thermo oil, we have these radiators inside our stenter, and that's how we convert the energy to the stenter. So this is already an existing system which we could use. Sometimes people have a central boiler, and they would just have to exchange mm -hmm the heater from a natural gas heater to, to a hydrogen heater, for instance. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Um, we have more interesting topics here. This is a, yeah. a very interesting concept. This is the stentor frame that we developed uh, some years ago. What well, is now, again, very, very uh, interesting. Uh, is it, uh, there is a central heating system. Yeah. The, the, the challenge is these hydrogen burners at the moment, they are very expensive. And they are also designed for, for larger uh, kilowatts. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to get away from the thinking that we have like 8, 16 burners uh, decentral. So the better way is to have larger uh, hydrogen burners and to have them, probably two of them, as a, as a central heating system on a stenter. And these are technologies which, which we also have. And we are in contact with hydrogen burner suppliers. Mm -hmm. But this big challenge is we first need to have hydrogen at the moment. <laughs> uh, there's not enough hydrogen available in the market. Yep. But uh, that's definitely the challenge. Mm -hmm. The other, maybe you click one further. Another thing is we can use, for instance, also liquid ammonia. And we can use uh, combined heat and power units, like a turbine, microgas turbine, to fire ammonia and use the, the useful heat from the mi microgas turbine we can bring into the process. And at the same time, we can generate electricity with the turbine. So we have basically solved two tasks in one. We have uh, mm -hmm. electricity from hydrogen plus process heat from hydrogen. Okay. So that's also another option. Mm -hmm. um, it very much depends on which kind of energy is available yes. uh, at the yes point of demand. So it's always, let's say, it's, it's always uh, depends on the location, where the customer is, the preconditions, what a, what a let's say, a, a company has already installed. And this we should always have in mind and made an, uh, make an analysis and yes. do the right thing. And, and yeah. So okay. let's, let's go further and uh, see yeah, if this there is are just more options. To mm -hmm. This is further up on the horizon. If we have hydrogen, uh, we can also convert the hydrogen into electricity via fuel cell. Fuel cell is known to everybody from the car industry. We have these hydrogen cars. Yes. They are also making use of hydrogen. They are creating electricity, generating electricity. And uh, the, the car is actually an electric car, which is uh, driven with electricity. So if we would have hydrogen, 
We could convert it into electricity to power the machine in an electrical way. As the solid oxide, solid oxide fuel cell generates also some heat, we can make use of the, of the residual heat of mm -hmm. this process, mm -hmm. bring it into the central thermo oil boiler, and again, this boiler could be heated with um, could be heated with a uh, s um, hydrogen burner. Yeah, the, the boiler. So we have the thermo oil system. It could also be steam. So it doesn't have to be thermo oil. Could also be steam. So in that way, we have a combined system which creates electrical power plus process heat. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's another way. But at the moment, these units are too small. Yeah? They are made for households, not yet for the industry. Not Therefore, for the industry yet. But it's coming up on the horizon, and I just wanted mm -hmm. to, to, show, to show it as a perspective. Understand, OK. Yeah. The biomass? Right. That's the other part. I mean, uh, in, uh, there are a lot of countries which have a lot of biomass. And as you may, may probably be aware, if biomass is just laying on the ground, it's starting to rot, and it will emit CO2 as well. And this CO2 is also um, responsible for global warming. Yeah, it is. So why ma the, the, the idea is to make useful, uh, to find a useful um, use for, for biomass. And of course, if you have an existing boiler, for instance, uh, for coal, you could also substitute fossil coal uh, by biomass, which you find. I've seen this in Guatemala, for instance. They're using mm -hmm. shells from... Um, from coffee beans, okay. roasted coffee beans, and they are just firing them in the in the boiler, and that works very well. So customers can already reduce their CO2 footprint if they substitute part of their um, fossil coil, uh, coal, sorry, by 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 biomass, um, and then the system is as it as we know it today. You use yeah. the biomass in the central burner, yeah. central boiler, thermo oil heating, steam heating, whatever. So that's that's a technology already known. Got it. Yeah, let's now uh, come now to a thing that is, I think, for my understanding, this is very interesting because it's it's the hybrid system. So let's say we combine um, a new way of heating with an existing one. Yes. And I think this is for many customers. This must be, let's say, a key for for the for the short term. Yeah. Yeah. Axel, please. Introduce yeah, we have a lot of that. customers asking uh, us to retrofit. Um, uh, their, their heating systems because they do have a certain amount of green power available from mm -hmm. solar mm -hmm. panels which they may have or from wind mills. So they go for uh, they go for hybrid heating systems. So let's assume the customer has a, um, a steam heating system at the moment, but he has this green uh, electricity. So we can combine electricity and steam heating in one in one module in the machine. So uh, that is possible. So we can have all kinds of combinations. Mm -hmm. Electrical plus gas, electrical plus steam, uh, electrical and thermo oil, gas, thermo oil, gas and steam. So these are um, well-established systems. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I always argue the center uh, basically uh, acts like a Swiss <laughs> army knife. Yep. Yeah? We can implement all kinds of tools, all kinds of um, uh, measures mm -hmm. to, to have a very flexible kind of heating. And if we are all afraid of a shortage of, shortage of gas, um, why not uh, top up our existing gas uh, heating system and put an electric uh, uh, additional electricity heating inside? Yeah. And, and in the next slide, I can show you. So this is a, a stander from the top view. So we are kind of looking okay. down at the stander from the top. This is the side this view. This is the side yeah. view. Okay. This is how the fabric travels. Th that would be the fabric travel. Here we have our heat exchangers. And in this case, we have um, combined uh, steam plus electrical heating in one system. So you can see two heat exchangers in, in a row. So the customer can make use of Electricity when the sun is shining, and he has uh, green electricity, he can use uh, the electrical uh, heat exchanger. And at night, when it's dark, when he still wants to continue working, he can use uh, the the steam heating, the thermal steam, oil steam heating, heating, or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think this is very so interesting. So that's an interesting option, yeah. and we have done a lot of retrofits, yeah. and of course, we have also 
implemented some new machines like that. Yeah. So this is, I think, as I said already, for, for, the, for the short term, I think this is very interesting. Uh, we have, what, what I have seen is we have combinations for almost all situation, what we find at the customer. So even if it's thermal oil or is this, if it's steam, even uh, what, is, what is the majority gas uh, fired uh, lines. So we have com a comprehens comprehensive uh, um, line for, for retrofit these, these, uh, these machines. And this is our answer for the short term. Yes. I think after all that information, we should maybe we should probably sum summarize this a little bit, wrap it up, right. uh, and uh, therefore we go back to this to yeah. this slide showing a little bit of this concept that we have. Right. Please sum it up a little so bit. So let's Axel. let's sum it up again. Uh, the first step is to look at your machine technology. What can you use to to improve? What can you do to improve your machine technology? Heat recovery systems. Maybe also look at these hybrid heating systems. So if there is electricity available in this very first step. Mm -hmm. You could also upgrade your machine to have a hybrid heating system, gas combined with electricity, just to be sure if there is a shortage of gas that you have a backup with electricity. Minimal application, these are all technologies. So that's the first step. Second step is look at your processes. What can I do to optimize my processes? Do I have a lot of idle time at my machines? Mm -hmm waiting times, queuing times, yes. can I optimize this? Then look at your recipes. Very often recipes are just uh, created because people have been working with this recipe for 20 years and everybody knows this recipe. But when we use our simulation tool to simulate the process and look at how efficient the recipe is, very often we find out that we can speed up the machine by another 20%. That there is still that room we can uh, optimize machine settings to reduce the uh, energy consumption and we can we can save another 20 percent of energy mm -hmm. so we can offer this as a service to you to 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 analyze your processes to get the maximum out of your machine because the faster you run and the less energy uh, you demand the less co2 emissions you will have so this is the process and then of course the co2 neutral um power sources, energy sources, that's a point which you have in your hand yourself as, as a textile producer. You can, have, you can um, install solar panels, you can buy green energy, but it's also a political part. So we have to it hope is. that our yep. polit politicians will help us to get hydrogen as fast as possible. It's just starting. We are now in a big pressure because of political situations. We need alternative um, uh, e-gases, e-fuels. It's out of our control. We can just hope that, poli that our politicians will, will find ways. Yeah. But you can also start on that yourself. You can s implement solar panels or... Everybody can start into that, yeah. yeah. So to sum it up, 25% uh, machine, 25% process, 50% process. power. And if, if we implement all of this on, on the horizon, there's actually a very fair chance, I believe, mm -hmm. that we can receive, uh, that we can convert this process in a, in a two CO2 uh, neutral process. Mm -hmm. I believe it's technically possible. It's a challenge, but we are not afraid of challenges. Are <laughs> we? we want to go ahead and we will do it. Yeah. So and what I understand, let's say, it's, it's, it's not, let's say, one step. There are many steps, but one has to start. Right. And what we see is, even in private households, people are starting into that. People are renewing their heating systems that they, ha that they have at home. And this is the same situation. So we should start into it, right. analyze what is, what is already there, what is in place, what, are, what is available, the resources, yeah, and make the best out of it. We at, at Brückner here, we have, I think we have shown that we have a really a comprehensive portfolio, a broad offer of technologies that can help our customers, make them, help them into, into that way. Right. Step ahead. Yeah, Axel. So, one more, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's, let's finish with. So, if you're interested, we are here at Tech Textile to help you, but we are also we are always available via email. You can contact me if you're interested to, uh, to, to enroll in a discussion on how we can assist you on getting CO2 neutral step by step. We are there to help you. Um, 
and uh, we thank you very much for your attention. It was a great event. Thank you very much. Thank you. For your interest and your attention. Thank you so much.